Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and thank you, uh, Professor Goran, and thank you, Professor Kennedy, for inviting me at this uh, symposium. And also, of course, uh, uh, thank you, uh, at the, at the uh, company Servier for uh, organizing this uh, very interesting, I hope, uh, uh, meeting. Uh, so I will discuss today uh, the, the relationship between uh, agomelatin and self-referential processing in, in, in depressed patients. Uh, first, I would like to uh, set up the scene of the, of the emotional brain. Uh, we can say that the emotional brains uh, is organized uh, along uh, two main networks. A first network, which is a perception network, which involves, for instance, the amygdala, orbitofrontal cortex. And this network is involved in uh, the detection and evaluation of emotionally relevant stimuli. On the other side, we've got the regulation network, uh, including uh, some uh, prefrontal area, lateral and uh, medial prefrontal area. And this uh, network is uh, uh, involved in uh, regulation of emotion uh, using different uh, uh, type of uh, process, cognitive processes, such as self-regulatory processes and cognitive uh, processes. Of course, this uh, network are uh, very uh, linked together and they are uh, interacting uh, for producing uh, a normal uh, adaptive behavior. We also know that social uh, stimuli and social processes, that is, the processes that allow us to, uh, for instance, uh, understand other people, what we call theory of mind, uh, to decode a face a perception, and also to have a, a self and other representation. All these social processes are potent stimuli, on a potent stimuli and potent source of emotion, and they activate this two uh, network, the perception network and the uh, regulation network. So social functioning and emotional functioning are really uh, linked together to produce adaptive behavior in the social context and the social world. So if we go to the, if we move to the depression, we can say that the depression is a multidimensional disorder. We know that uh, depression is associated with motor deficit, vegetative symptom, cognitive impairment, and of course, uh, emotional changes. And we know that, for instance, there are at least two uh, major changes in depression the persistent sadness, and also uh, the loss of positive emotion, the loss of positive pleasure, which is called uh, anhedonia. We also know that depressed patients have difficulty to process uh, this uh, emotional stimuli. They've got what we call emotional bias. Uh, that is, depressed patients, for instance, uh, pay more attention to the uh, processing of negative stimuli, and this can be observed uh, during attentional task, memory task, judgment, or interpretations. Our research team has uh, focused uh, and have emphasized uh, the importance of another emotional bias in, in depression, what we call increased uh, self-focus. The self-focus is the fact that you evaluate stimuli, that could be social stimuli or neutral stimuli, emotional stimuli, and you try to relate these stimuli to your own persons. And what we observe in depression, we found in depression that there is an abnormal self-focus uh, in depression, and this is uh, abnormal in terms of quantity. There is an increased tendency of depressed patients to self-evaluate, we can see this through uh, the symptom of rumination, self-criticism, self-blame, and also uh, this abnormal self-focus is also abnormal in terms of quality. Uh, for instance, depressed patients tend to think more about abstract aspect uh, rather than concrete uh, aspect of, uh, of so for instance, form, uh, of uh, problems. So this uh, excessive self-focus in depression induces a kind of shift of attention from the external world 
to the internal world. And this may contribute to uh, the social and functional impairment of uh, depressed patients. So what are the neural correlates of this excessive self-focus in depressions? So here, uh, an old study we, uh, we uh, conducted with, uh, with Cédric Lemoyne, where we asked people to make uh, some judgment on uh, words, emotional words, describing personality traits. So we asked people, they were depressed patients and controls, and we say, you will see words, and say, does this word relate to you? Do you have these personality traits? Or is it good or bad? So this is a general condition to have this personality trait. And what we found, we found that there was an increase in the dorsomedial prefrontal cortex that was unique in depressed patients compared to control, and that this increased activation of the dorsomedial prefrontal cortex was more pronounced in the self condition compared to the general condition. We also found uh, an increase in the dorsolateral part, uh, which was also unique to the self condition and to the patient compared to the controls. What is interesting is that another study using this time not emotional words, but only uh, social stimuli, like this kind of stimuli, so one people or other people interacting to, together with some, pe some picture positive or negative regarding the, the emotion, the content of emotion. And what the author found in this study is that the depressed patients have, again, an increased activity of this dorsomedial prefrontal cortex, as we can see here, and especially during the processing of only one single person. Excuse me. But on the other hand, they've got a decrease of activity when they have to process the, uh, the group and uh, looking at people interacting together. So overall, if we summarize the first part of this, task, of this talk, uh, we can say that uh, there is abnormal self and other processing in major depression. And this contribute to impair emotional and social functioning in depressed patients. And this is a, a very a concern of depressed patients, uh, as we will see uh, for the, the next speaker, because we know that it is a major target for treatment uh, from the patient's uh, perspective. So what are the effects of agomelatin on this kind of on this kind of processes, and what are the effects of uh, the agomelatin on uh, the brain correlate of self-referential processes? So in collaboration with, uh, with Servier, we conducted a study uh, on agomelatin and self-processing in depressed patients and LC control. So the main objective of the study was to assess the brain effect using fMRI of agomelatin versus placebo during a self-referential task in depressed patient, acute depressed patient versus LC control after seven days uh, of uh, treatment by uh, either placebo or agomelatin. So here is the specific design uh, of the study. So all the patients will receive, the patient in the agomelatin harm will receive uh, 25 milligram uh, per day of agomelatin. This was a double-blind, randomized study. There was two groups of patients, one group uh, receiving placebo and one group receiving uh, agomelatin for seven days. After seven days, all the patients were uh, receiving uh, agomelatin, and there was uh, a follow-up uh, for six months. We also include, uh, included uh, LC control groups that was only a receiving placebo. There was not administration of agomelatin in the LC volunteers. And we assess the brain activity of depressed patient and control using uh, an fMRI task. And we, use, and we assess three times for patients and two times for controls. So we've got two scans. The first scan uh, before receiving uh, treatment either agomelatin or placebo, and the other scan uh, after one week uh, uh, of placebo of agomelatin. And same in control, except that there was no agomelatin uh, uh, treatment arm in, the, in this group. And 
After seven weeks of treatment, we also uh, uh, assess uh, the brain correlates using a third scan, but I will not discuss uh, these results today. So the depressed patient included in this study was really depressed patients, that was outpatient depressed, with uh, at least more than 22 at the Hamilton score, with a CGI severity more than four, and we tried to uh, uh, avoid to include patients with a high uh, a level of anxiety. And all patients needed uh, an antidepressant treatment. Of course, we, sell, uh, we match uh, the subject for age, sex, and, and other aspect. And there was no uh, uh, psychiatric disorder in the LC controls. So what the people were supposed to do during the, the study, so they were in the scan, and we asked them to make some judgment. There were three uh, different judgments, self, general, and controls. And they saw this kind of, uh, of picture, and they have to say, does this picture relate to something personal or not? Or in general, is it a positive or a negative uh, emotional pictures? And there was also some neutral pictures and people asked to answer, uh, is it an internal uh, picture or external picture outside or inside? So we did that. Uh, so we included 25 uh, patients, 13 in the agomelatine, 12 in the placebo, and 14 in the LC, for LC volunteers. So I don't want to go into the detail, but just to say that they were really depressed. There were some, some patients with recurrent depressions, and there were some people with melancholic features. Uh, we can see that uh, the Hamilton score was more than uh, 22 as uh, expected, and there was a, it was really a severe uh, uh, population. So we also assess the behavioral response of subject. When they saw the picture, they have to say, does this picture relate to you or not? Yes or no? Is it a positive or negative picture? Yes or no? And we can say, we can uh, register the reaction time. And what we found, we found that the depressed patients as a group were more, uh, the, the reaction time was more important than, uh, than the LC volunteer. So there was a, a psychomotor retardation in depressed patients, classical, uh, classical result. But we found that uh, after one week of treatment, after one week of treatment, there was a specific decrease of uh, the reaction time only in the agomelatin group compared to the placebo uh, patient groups. And this was more pronounced for uh, the uh, processing of uh, positive pictures during the self-conditioned. So overall, that means that after one week of treatment, even we did not see any changes in the clinical symptomatology assessed by the Hamilton, we found that there was uh, a decreased reaction time during self-referential processing of positive emotional pictures, so a positive effect of agomelatin on the processing uh, of self and uh, positive emotions. So what's happened at the brain level? At the brain level, we found that this is a brain activity at baseline. So we pull together all the depressed patients, compare this to the LC volunteers at W0, so at baseline, and we found that there were three main regions that were more activated in depressed patients compared to control. And this region were uh, this region, right and left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, and one brain region with here, which is the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex. Then we look after what's happened after one week of treatment in the, do, in the two uh, groups. And what we found, we found that there was a unique effect of the agomelatin on the activity on, the, on this region, the right ventrolateral prefrontal cortex. And as we can see, there was a decrease uh, in, this, uh, active, in this region. <clears throat> and this was uh, significant compared to LC volunteers, but also uh, compared to the, LC, uh, uh, to the patients receiving uh, placebo. So, what we found, we found that there was an increased activity in these regions in depressed patient and baseline, and this could be related to abnormal, excessive uh, control, because we know that this region is involved in cognitive control of emotion. And we found that after 
uh, after uh, one week of treatment, there is a normalization uh, of uh, this uh, ventrolateral prefrontal cortex uh, hyperactivity that restored the activity at the level of uh, LC control, and this, this was observed only in the agomelatin group and not uh, in the uh, placebo group. So to summarize uh, these results, we can say that depressed patients so showed hyperactivity in some brain regions, dorsolateral, dorsal cingulate, and ventrolateral prefrontal cortex compared to controls. After seven days of treatment, agomelatin compared to placebo in depressed patients normalized the uh, abnormal brain pattern of ventrolateral prefrontal cortex activity and normalized to the level of LC volunteers. We also observed that agomelatin improved emotional self-referential processing in depressed patients, especially for positive uh, pictures. And one question that could be uh, asked now is, is this related to uh, anhedonia? Because there are some studies showing that the VLPFC is uh, impair activity of the NPFC could induce a decrease uh, in positive effect. Uh, we do not have uh, an edonia scale, so we cannot correlate, but we are, uh, we are thinking that this change could be uh, uh, related to uh, an edonia effect of, uh, uh, of agomelatin. So to conclude, uh, so the agomelatin has early brain effect on self-processing in depression, and this is observed before any changes in the clinical symptomatology. We can say that the agomelatin set up the brain for long-term antidepressant response and remissions. And we can say also that agomelatin target emotional, targets emotional processing related to social functioning rec uh, recovery uh, in depressed patients. So I think it's my last slide, and I thank you for your attention.